Thanks for inviting me. Uh, thank you for the introduction, uh, Gary. And I just want to uh, wish everybody a happy Father's Day. Uh, thanks to the progressives, uh, there's a lot of households in America that actually don't have a father. They really would like the government to be the father in our families. So I think if we continue to allow the progressives to take over uh, this country, uh, they might change the name of Father's Day to Fatherland Day. Uh, I wrote a book called Progressivism, a primer on the idea of destroying America. And I think that if you, and somebody's holding up a copy right there, I love it. And the cover is black and red for reasons that uh, you could figure out uh, once you read the book. Um, I think the, the book is very useful for understanding the reaction of progressives to mass shootings. We just had a tragic episode the other day. In the book, I talk about the fact that progressivism is a kind of self-imposed mental disability, wherein the progressive convinces himself without any facts or logic that government action is the solution to all human problems, and therefore, the progressive becomes blind to any evidence that the government itself may be the culprit. Also, keep in mind that in order to distract attention away from prior progressive government failures, the progressive instinctively resorts to a set of pre predetermined non-governmental scapegoats to be blamed for any new problems that come along. What is rarely realized, even by non-progressives, is that blaming innocent scapegoats for problems created by government is a pernicious form of hate speech. So, in the South Carolina tragedy, before all the relevant facts are known, progressives are already trotting out white racism. And by the way, when they say white racism, they mean white people, okay? And they're also trotting out their old scapegoat of private gun ownership. A phenomenon I defined a few years ago and spelled out in the book on progressivism is called liberty reduction as a form of grieving. We used to go to church and mourn the dead. Now, the progressives, in order to Breathe, conspire to reduce the liberty of everybody who didn't do the crime that they're complaining about. And so you have the president calling for reducing the liberty of innocent people to own guns. Liberty reduction is a form of grieving. You see it all over American society today. On the other hand, according to the progressive mindset, no government policies may be discussed as possible contributors to this tragedy. There has been zero or little note taken of these possible factors. One, the failure of a law restricting guns at church to stop the shooter. Two, the deterrent effect of that same law on the victims as it required specific consent from the church to carry a concealed weapon. Three, the deterrent effect of handgun licensing laws in South Carolina. And I believe the only license you need to have a gun, including a handgun, is the Second Amendment. The ban on open carry in South Carolina. The fact that the government takes people's money and usurps tremendous power and promises to keep people safe and yet provides little actual protection in advance of crime as in this case, my colleague Tom DiLorenzo says very often the police serve as, a, as crime historians. They show up, draw a chalk line around your body after it's too late. Six, the fact that the perpetrator was able to freely access the church from a government-owned street on which the state allows any and all criminals and terrorists access. A fine point, I admit, but again, let me make this clear. The government in the United States guarantees the right of the most dangerous criminals and terrorists to come right up to your doorstep on their public road. 
Walter Block, the uh, great Austrian economist who wrote a book on this subject, I think will appreciate that, that point. Seven, whether the shooter was under the influence of state-approved psychotropic drugs prescribed by state licensed professionals. Eight, the fact that the shooter was, after years of, quote, preparation for life at government school, unemployed and aimless. Nine, the fact that the shooter attended government school for many years and thus the state itself helped shape his mindset, his character, his values and subjected him to a pro-drug culture rampant in government schools. And I'm certain uh, that my, my friend Judge Form over the years saw a lot of drug cases arising out of some of the, the local schools in Buffalo. Ten, finally, the fact that progressives promised us in the 1960s, when I was just a kid, but watching very closely the developments in the civil rights movement, that if their various policies and programs to improve race relations and improve the social and economic welfare of African Americans were followed, that enormous progress would be made. But in 2015, it is obvious that they have failed and that under progressivism, race relations are getting worse and large segments of the black community are stagnating are declining or are in despair. The self-imposed mental disability of progressivism is very destructive. It prevents progressives from properly analyzing the underlying causes of social problems, blinds them to the role of government in generating such problems, and finally it encourages them, encourages them to find innocent, non-governmental scapegoats to blame for the problem of the day and to engage in hate speech against them, subjecting them to the risk of violent retaliation. The fact is that people who differ from each other in many ways do get along in the free marketplace, but not in the government place, where government and politicians divide people into winners and losers and play various groups against each other in the pursuit of power. All over the world and in the United States, the state system has failed and is failing to bring peace and harmony among different racial, ethnic, and religious groups. Only liberty can bring us all together. Government guns never have and never will. Thank you.